Ladies and gentlemen, the following preview has been approved for all audiences by the folks at Crossover Church. Crossover Church engages this series for the purpose of spiritual ideas. Use your own discretion and wisdom when watching the full series. Yeah, Crossover, what's up? Crossover, what's up? I don't know if y'all mad at me because I didn't need worship today or what? Everybody doing all right? How many of us watch Saved by the Bell? How many of us grew up watching that show? Come on now. Come on. Come on. I get goosebumps when I come on. I am a Saved by the Bell geek. I got my Bayside High t-shirt on. If you don't know what this t-shirt is, you ain't watch it. It's all right. But uh, so glad to be here, guys. For those of you that don't know me, I am not Pastor Tommy. I'm just a little bit darker. Uh, I'm Pastor Darnell, our worship and creative arts pastor here. It's such an honor to be with you guys today um, to bring this word to you guys. I got to give a crazy shout out to, to Remix Worship, our worship team here. He led us today. Thank you so much. They are just coming off of tour. Uh, we were in... <laughs> We were, in Daytona, we were in Daytona Beach on Friday night, and um, they did a night of worship uh, for some high school students. It's really awesome. They have a program out there uh, for high school students who feel called to the ministry. And um, it was an awesome camp, awesome. God met us, and, I mean, lives were changed. It was absolutely uh, phenomenal. So thank you guys to uh, Remix Worship. Um, so I want to talk today about Saved by the Bell. How many of us truly can call ourselves Saved by the Bell fans? Saved by the Bell fans. Some of y'all just watched it, but some of us are Saved by the Bell fans. And it was so hard when we started talking about the different series and how to do this thing. And um, Saved by the Bell came up. Pastor Tommy looked right at me, and I, he was like, you doing that. And I was like, okay. But I started thinking about it. That's a lot that happened in Saved by the Bell, man. Saved by the Bell had so many different things that were happening. So let's talk about Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell, where are you going? I'm not yet. Go back. Saved by the Bell. So Saved by the Bell was this show about um, these kids who went through life struggles. I mean, they dealt with so many different types of things, and it was this group of best friends. And it was so um, almost awkward because every single person was totally different. So you had Zach Morris, who was the popular guy. This was the, you know, he ran everything. You had Screech, who was that nerdy kid who, yeah. I don't know if that was a crush. Like, oh, I don't know what that was. But anyway, yeah, yeah, Screech here. Then you had the brainiac here, Jesse, who did this. Then you had the pretty popular cheater, Kelly Kapowski. And then you had, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You had Lark Voorhees here. You, my wife know, okay? So we had Laura Voorhees here. And, I mean, she was the pretty girl and everything. Then you had the jock, A.C. Slater. And then, of course, you had the uh, Mr. Belding. And so I don't know if many of you guys didn't know this. It didn't start off as Saved by the Bell. It actually came from another TV show, and it was called Good Morning, Miss Bliss. Anybody ever see that one? Good Morning, Mrs. Bliss was a show. And you had Zach, and you had Screech, and you had um, Lisa Turtle, and you just had some other people. This wasn't going too well. So they, re they brought it back, and they said, okay, let's fix this thing, and that's where we have our new show, Saved by the Bell. Well, not the new show, but now you have the Saved by the Bell cast, and that's where that came from. When Saved by the Bell went off the air, they were like, it was too good, and so they started doing new things. They did Saved by the Bell, the college years. Y'all remember that? Saved by the Bell, college years. And then they did this new thing called Saved by the Bell, the new class. Anybody remember that? Saved by the Bell, a new class? So they tried this whole new concept with Saved by the Bell, a new class, keep Screech on, he's now an assistant principal, and it was like, eh, And then, all of a sudden, somebody had the audacity to try to reboot Saved by the Bell, present day. Check out this clip right here. Yo, mama. Sorry, Dr. Mama. How do you think this year's gonna go for these new students? I'm psyched. You're excited for the first day of school? Let's go. Why is everybody so rich? Are you ready for my party Saturday night? I got DJ Khaled's baby to make you a playlist. It's okay. Time out. What is up with these kids? Yeah. Yeah. 
In attendance will be the governor of California. Max, Dad? You look amazing and your hair's fire. My dad's also coming. I don't care about your dad, Spencer. I just care about Zach and... Mm. Absolutely not. We're not doing that. They have the audacity to try to bring back Say Why the Bell and redo this thing and make it new. And guess what? It absolutely flopped. Which brings me to point number one in life lessons about Say Why the Bell. Just because it's new doesn't mean it should be done. Just because it's brand new does not mean that it should be done. I want to look at a biblical aspect of this. The Ark of the Covenant. Anybody know about the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant was something that was created. And what it did is represented the presence of God going with the people of Israel. It, it represented the covenant to them. It was the, the Ark of the Covenant. It was this beautiful this beautiful artwork and imagery and everything. And here's what's so important about this. God had a specific way that this ark was supposed to be built. He gave specific instructions on how it was supposed to be built. And matter of fact, he gave specific instructions on who was to touch and carry the ark. And here's what happened. In 1 Samuel, David became the king. And David all of a sudden had this idea. He had a, a, a new vision, a new bigger and better kingdom than it was before. So David said, I'm going to do new things. I'm going to do things bigger and better. So David decided he was going to build a new ark. And so they decided to take this ark to the new capital that he had brought in. And he had the two oxen pulling the ark. And he had his homeboys that were there with it. Well, along the journey, one of the oxen fell. And one of his homeboys decided to try to help. And he touched the ark. Does anybody know what happened to him? He died. And the Bible says that. He, the Lord was angry that he was angry and so what happened was he touched the ark it was not done the way that the father had commanded them to do so just because David decided he was going to build a new ark and make this thing wonderful doesn't mean that it should have been done because he had a specific way in which he wanted those things to be done so listen now, this doesn't mean that new can't always be better I have seen some movie sequels that were better than the original. Anybody ever seen that? Name a movie that has a sequel better than the original. Who? Bad Boys? <laughs> name another movie that was... Come on, name one. Top Gun? Top Gun? <laughs> yeah. Godfather 2, hands down, bro, hands down. Godfather 2 was on it. Anybody else? I'm going to tell you right now, Avengers. Every Avenger movie got better, in my opinion. Every Avengers movie, Captain, Captain America, definitely, 2 was better than 1. De definitely, definitely. What else? Toy Story. Toy Story 2 was bomb, y'all. Bump y'all. <laughs> Forget y'all. Toy Story 2 was it, man. Terminator. Terminator was another good one. Terminator 2 was definitely better. So, just knowing that. Just because it's new does not mean it should be done. Let's go to point number two. Watch this clip. There you are, Zach. I've been looking all over for I, you. You time out. <laughs> Man, this is horrible. I just meant to get a car. If I don't find a way out of this, my life at Bayside is over. I'm in. Oh, oh, Mr. Belkin, I'm sorry. So point number two is real simple. Stop and think, y'all. Stop to actually think, all right? So in this world, Zach Morris was able to call a timeout on life. And in that timeout, what he was able to do was evaluate the situation that he was in. For that clip that we just saw, Slater was about to knock him out. So Zach said, nah, nah, nah. And his girlfriend was kissing another dude. So, nah, bump this, time out. And he was able to pause and think about that situation. Remove himself from direct line of being punched. Put that paper in between his girlfriend so that she couldn't kiss him. And he could evaluate that situation. There are a lot of times in life that we need to do a time out. We need to pause. We need to stop. We need to think. We need to reevaluate our situation. 
Philippians 4, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Here's what's so important, because a lot of people stop there. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. To be able to stop and think allows so many things. Number one, why stop? To gain perspective. Gain perspective. It's important because it allows you to step back and see a bigger picture of what's actually being presented. Because a lot of times we can put ourselves in a situation, we can put ourselves in an in a, in a environment, and we only see one thing. Because we've got this straight and narrow target, I'm looking dead here, and that's all I see. But if you're able to stop and evaluate the whole thing, you really notice you've got this peripheral where I can now, I can now see the entire room. I just stop and kind of look right here, and I've just got my attention here. I'm looking straight at the camera, and that's all I see. But if I really stop and evaluate, I can see everything. And a lot of times we don't stop to gain perspective. We just kind of go in in this one track mind and that's all we do. Number two, here's the important y'all. Why stop? Make sure that your facts are right. Make sure your facts are right. Boy, we like to jump into something real quick. We'll jump in another, we'll jump in our friend's situation before we even know what's happening in the situation. Your friend could come to you and say, hey, man, you don't even know, bro. They tried me. Who tried you? <laughs> we'll jump ready to go at them, ready to go do, fight this battle with them, go do this whole thing, and all of a sudden we'll end up in this situation with them, and then all of a sudden the other person's explaining what happened, and you got to take a step back and go, shoot, you was wrong, bro. Anybody ever been there? Wait, watch this. Anybody got friends like that? I got a friend. I'm telling you. I'm not going to call his name out, Tristan. No, I'm just I'm not going to I'm not. He'd he be ready to go. He'd be ready to go, bro. Like, hey, man, come on, come on, come on. And there'd be times I'm like, let's do it, bro. Let's do it. And we get to this situation, and we start looking at stuff, and people start explaining things. And I go back, and I take a step back, and I go, hey, bro, man, you was wrong, dog. <laughs> Made me get up in this situation, and you was wrong the whole entire time. This is important because, listen, misperceptions can increase likelihood of conflict, which does decrease the likelihood of cooperation. Cooperation is important in order to build and maintain effective working relationships. So it's important for us to understand and make sure that our facts are right. In, in sports, they call a timeout to do what? Evaluate the play. Evaluate where they are. They call it, so a lot of times they get into a situation and they call a timeout because they see something that they're not used to. They see something that they don't like. They see something that they're not exactly familiar with. So they call a timeout so they can regroup, reevaluate, and figure out how to handle the situation that they're in. A lot of times in our lives, we see things that we don't understand. We don't exactly know what's going on. And instead of calling a timeout to rethink it, we just jump in. And all of a sudden, we jumped into a situation we don't know how to handle. You, you can ask questions. Ask questions if you don't know. Hey, man, what's your opinion on this? The whole point of it is that it's opinion. Some people give you opinion that you don't need to take. Some of y'all taking opinions y'all don't need to take. Amen. Evaluate and look at it for yourself. Uh, some, now, this ain't everybody. This wasn't me. But some people, you put your children in timeout. Ain't nothing wrong with timeout. I'm not telling y'all you can't put your children in timeout. I'm just saying everybody doesn't put their children in timeout. I ain't know what timeout was. What is timeout? But some people put their children in timeout. They say the purpose of timeout is for the child to get in the corner or wherever they're sitting timeout and to think. And they say, now go think about what you just did. How many of them children thought about what they just did? They over there thinking about the next thing they fit to do <laughs> as soon as they get up. But the whole point is that the parent was saying, hey, let's do a timeout. Let's figure this thing out. As Christians, we are called to be still at times. We are called to be still at times. All right. It's fascinating that, that several moments Jesus was among crowds, among a lot of people. But if you read it and you look at it, 
Shortly after, he always found a way to get time. He always found a way to make time to be alone, to find those moments. So in Mark 134, in that scripture, he was actually doing healings in that moment. In that scripture, Jesus was healing. In Mark 135, the very next scripture, it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. He took a moment to take a time out and be alone. In Luke 5, 16, it says that Jesus, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places where he prayed. There are times we need to eliminate the noises of the world so that we can hear the voice of God. He wants us to spend time with him. Our spirits actually crave solitude. They actually crave silence. But our conditions teach us that to be comfortable with being in crowds and noise. We live in a noisy world, y'all. It's loud everywhere we go. Silence and solitude are not 20th century words. <laughs> They're just not. They are absolutely not. But we become people who have avoided quiet and uneasiness with being alone. We've made this whole thing of being alone this almost negative thing. I shouldn't be alone. I can't be alone. It's not good for me to be alone and have my time. I'm not saying you got to spend the rest of your life alone, but I'm talking about getting some one-on-one -on -one time with God. Before I can ever come out here and corporately lead you all in worship, I have to have a worship experience of my own. You understand what I'm saying? I can't just come out here and lead this team and say, okay, everybody, let's go here. I've said this many a times. I can never lead people to a place I've never been myself. So I have to take time for myself to get where I have to get alone with God. Because it's where I'm alone with God that I realize where we're supposed to go. You understand that? And it's the same thing for your lives. You are the worship leader of your own life. You are the worship leader for your family. You have to spend some alone time with him to understand where it is that you are supposed to take your family. If you ain't spending no alone time with God, how are you going to know where to take your family? How can you lead your family somewhere you've never been before? You have to have some alone time with him to understand those things. Y'all got it? Let's go to number three. Number three. Say by the bell got so much. Jesus, have mercy. Number three. <laughs> How many of y'all remember that episode? Did you remember that? The toga party. We were going and having fun and everything. And all of a sudden, uh, Zach's driving and he hits a telephone pole. And, of course, the gang thinks, we can fix this. Nobody has to know. Nobody's ever going to find out. We can cover this thing up. And nobody will ever find out. Slater will fix the car. Lisa, you call my dad and you pretend to be your mom. And we can do this. And, of course, Zach, the brainiac, the, the mastermind behind all this stuff, is like, oh, no, we'll get it, we'll get it, we'll get it, we'll get it. But eventually, what's done in the dark will come to the light. Point number three, simple. Don't tell lies. Don't tell lies. I have found, I'm listen, listen to how I'm saying this, I have found, it's easier not to lie and just tell the truth. Because the moment you start lying, you now have to remember every lie you told before the next lie that you have to create for the next lie because I lied about this, which means I have to lie about that. And therefore, I have to make up a lie to come to that lie from before. And then, which lie was that that I made up before? So I got to cover this lie and everything else. And then all of a sudden, I messed up my whole entire lie and everything I've just done has become a lie. And now your life has become a lie. So just don't tell lies. What I've learned is that lying for some people no longer becomes a trap, it's become a way of life. It's become a way of how they live. It's an automatic thing that they just do. They just all, it's, it's easier for them to just lie. It's almost like their mind says, you, it's impossible for you to tell the truth. So go ahead and just lie. That is nothing but the enemy messing with you. And so they lie just to do things. I've heard people in the business world who will say, well, I got to lie a little bit if I want to sell a car. Can't tell them the whole truth. I can't, I can't give all, all those things away. Uh, you know, I got to lie a little bit on my taxes if I want to get some more money back. I got, I got to do this. I, it's okay to tell a little lie, to do all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just business. And so you're making a living out of being a fraud. You're making a living out of being a fraud. And the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 25, 
A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. Deceitful. Psalms 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. It clearly says exactly what we should do. You may remember uh, Abraham, the story of Abraham. A lot of members remember Abraham. He was a man of God, considered his friend, and he promised to take care of him. But there's a story about Abraham in the Bible that they were traveling and they came to uh, this kingdom. They came to this place. This kingdom was governed by a king. And he told his wife, Sarah, to lie to the king. And tell the king that he was his sister instead of his wife. Because he felt like it would be better if he did it that way. And because he told, Sarah told him he was his sister, they allowed him to stay there. And what happens later on in this story is that people started having dreams. And God gave a vision to the king and revealed in that moment that Sarah was not his sister, but indeed his wife. And so I think people come in situations where they just feel like it's easier to lie because I'm afraid to tell the truth. I'm afraid of what will happen, so let me just lie. And then later on down the road in life or whatever it may be, we realize once that truth has come out that it would have been much easier from the beginning if I had just told the truth. And I think a lot of times we get caught up in this, this whole scenario of how we want our life to go, we want, of how we want things to be, that we paint a picture in our head, honestly, that is unrealistic. Why is it unrealistic? Because you have included face of false, false pretenses in your mind. You included this whole thing of if I make this thing up, then it will be better. In other words, what you have done is just created a fantasy in your own mind. I've just, I've now got a fantasy of what this looks like. You have done nothing but create a movie. You've done nothing but make a, write a script in your own mind of what is actually not true to be. But if you were just be truthful from the very beginning, what I have learned, it is, I've been saying, telling this to my mom ever since I got my life right. I've been telling this to my mom. Ever, <laughs> it is so much easier being in the will of God than being out of it. It is so much easier being in the will of God than being out of it. Please let me, understand me, hear me real good on this one. You cannot have two masters. You can't. You'll be like, oh, no, but I'm living. I'm doing everything. I'm trying to tell you. You cannot have two masters and get where God has for you to go. I tried it. I tried it. Every time I started climbing up that mountain, every time I was going up that hill, guess what? Something knocked me right back down. And I had to start all over again. And it wasn't until I finally said, you know what? I'm done with this mess. I'm done with the lies. I'm done with the deceit. I'm done with playing all these games. God, what is it you want for me to do? And God said, it's about time, Darnell. Let's go to the mountaintop. And the moment I said, okay, God, I'm with you. We going 100%. I'm not looking back. I'm not going back. God said, great. Now, it's time for me to elevate you instead of man. And the moment you get to a place where God can elevate you instead of man, you are on your way. You are about to receive things that you never thought you received before. I've had blessings come into my life that I never thought I would ever get to. It don't matter a pay cut. It don't matter what you may have given up in the past. It don't matter what you did. The moment you start following what God asked for you, the moment you get on track with the will of God for your life, nothing can stand in your way from getting what God asked for you. Nothing. But the first thing you got to do is you better stop lying. Here's what you got to stop doing. Don't stop, not just stop lying to people, stop lying to yourself. Stop trying to tell yourself that there's something that you're not. A lot of times we put our own selves down. We say, no, I can't do that. No, I can't be that. No, I can't do this. No, I can't do that. And the whole time God is saying, you can do it because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So the moment you grab hold of it, the moment you grab faith of that, the moment you start believing that you are who God called you to be, watch where God takes you. And stop waiting for man to take you there. Y'all got it? Wonderful. Last, last one. Clip four. Y'all ready? Last one.
Yeah, that's not Kelly. Where's not Kelly? Whoa! Someone's got to tell Kelly. Yeah, but who's gonna tell her? <laughs> hey, don't look at me. Believe me, Zach, she'll thank you. You maggot mouth liar, you're just jealous. Jeff would never cheat on me. Kelly, I saw it with my own eyes. You're wrong. Last night, Jeff went bowling with his roommates. Why don't you just mind your own business and stay out of my life? Screech, did you see Jeff there? Um. Um. Uh... <laughs> it's true. But why? I mean, why, why would Jeff cheat on me? I don't know, Kelly. Men are such fools. That creep. All right, everybody just calm down. Lisa, you take the picture. Then Slater, you hit him while he's blinded by the flag. Kelly! <laughs> Hi. Uh, excuse us, Jen. Kelly, what are you doing here? I'd ask you the same thing, but I already know the answer. You were right, Zach. I guess I should erase all those bad things I wrote about you in my diary. <laughs> That'd be nice. Y'all remember that one right there? I was mad anyway because Zach and Kelly were supposed to be together forever. Through every episode, they were never supposed to. I'm lying. I take that back. I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted Zach and Lisa to get together. You, did you send me that? Was it you that said, she sent me a clip yesterday or a picture, and it was Zach ki kissing Lisa and Screech was in the background. You remember that episode where Zach stole Lisa and Screech was so mad and everything? I was the only person in America going, yeah, boy. I wanted Zach and Lisa to be together. I was like, this is it. That's where it's at. It was the only time I felt like Zach was a good guy. I know he took her, but, you know, Screech, she was never yours. Anyway, so, but in this clip here, uh, we see in this storyline that, the first of all, it's so funny because Saved by the Bell was so, now that I'm older, I see it. Saved by the Bell, there were so many wrong things that these people did in order to get a right thing. <laughs> they got fake IDs to get into the club. Weren't supposed to be in the club, but... I'm glad they're in the club because we were able to find out that Kelly's boyfriend was cheating on her so they could go do the right thing and tell Kelly. So we had to do the wrong thing in order to do the right thing. Yeah, say by the bills jacked up. Don't worry, watch it anymore, okay? <laughs> but in this clip, they sit there and they go through and they find out that Kelly's boyfriend's cheating on her and they're like, oh man, who's gonna tell her who's gonna do these things? So number four, a real friend will always tell you the hard truth. A real friend will always tell you the hard truths. This is the part of pastoring <laughs> where it's like, oh, man, but we got to tell you the hard truth. We have to. It, it's literally what we have to do. And the reality of the whole thing is, I, this is where I look at it now and see it really, really full circle, is that we ain't just telling you our opinion. We're giving you the word of God. And people get mad when we stand up here and give you what the word says. I don't like it. I don't like what he said. I don't like why, why I got to do that. Why I got to do all this kind of stuff. It wasn't because Pastor Tommy said it. It wasn't because Pastor Christopher said it. It wasn't because I said it. It's because the word of God said it. We ain't doing nothing but giving you the meat that you need in order to live. But a real friend will always tell our truth, and no matter how hard it was, even though Zach and Kelly had broken up, Zach had to sit there and tell his friend what was going on. There was a scene, I'm not going to show a clip from it, but they'll put a picture up. It was probably the most iconic episode in Saved by the Bell history. And Jesse the Brainiac was... Um, in this girl group and they had this audition that we were doing and everything and um, she was taking pills. Go ahead, put that clip up, that picture up. They, she was taking pills and she was trying to study and she was trying to do all these things and her, 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 um, her friends were counting on her and, and she was doing all this, these, these things and she, she was just doing so, so much and so she began to take drugs to keep, make herself stay awake and do all these things. And while a record deal was on the table and Zach was like, we got to do this. And, and her friends were counting on her and all this stuff. All of a sudden in this scene, Zach realizes that this is hurting his friend. And while Zach is the manager and he has an opportunity to go to next level with him, 
He takes a moment in that moment and says, I will be a real friend and you cannot do this. And so he forfeits what he can get to make sure she gets what she can get. He makes sure that she get what she needs. So it's so important. Your real friends will tell you the hard truth. In Proverbs 19.20, it says, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. The key word in this whole thing is the very first word, listen. Some of us don't like to listen. Oh, we can hear just fine. I hear you. You ever heard of somebody saying, yeah, I hear you. But are you listening to what they say? Luke 6.31, real simple. Do to others as you would have them do to you. There's a moment in the Bible where Jesus was finishing a speech at the temple and he broke down the differences between uh, himself and his listeners. And he said, you are from below and I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am he. You will indeed die in your sins. And the result of that message, it even says in the word of God, that the people that were listening believed him. They believed him. Then in verse 31, Jesus begins to speak to only those who had believed. And he said to the believers, if you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. If you hold on to my teaching, you are really my disciples. In other words, true discipleship is so much more than just intellect. Those who are really followers of Christ will hold on to his word. They'll hold on to it. That means that we don't only accept his teachings, but we obey his teachings. Because it's one thing to come in here and just accept what we say. If you don't do what the Bible says outside of these walls, you'll miss it. So you can't just, just hear this stuff, y'all. You can't just hear it. You got to go out and do something. Action is proof of faith. In James 2.17, it says that. Action is proof of faith. Faith without works is, you better do something. So verse 32 actually begins with, then you will know the truth. Then you will know the truth. The you refers to those who are true disciples of Jesus. True disciples will know the truth. How many of us have ever heard that? The truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. The truth of being Jesus' disciples comes with freedom. It comes with freedom, y'all. Jesus continues and says, and the truth will set you free in 32. At that point in history, the Jews understood that uh, they were still being watched by the governors and, and the, the, the appointed kings and the soldiers and everything. But when Jesus said the truth would set them free, at that moment, he wasn't talking about a political freedom. It wasn't about a political freedom at that moment. He said very, very simply in 34, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And being a slave to sin, y'all, is the ultimate bondage. How many of us don't want to be a slave to sin? You don't want to be a slave to sin. The freedom Jesus offers here is a spiritual freedom from the bondage of sin. And here in this moment where Jesus is offering freedom from the very bondage of sin, it is more than an action step of walking through these doors. I think a lot of times in today's culture we feel like as long as I come to church, I'm good. As long as I sit there and I don't say much and I don't cause a ruckus and I don't get in no trouble and I don't do this kind of stuff, I'm good. As long as, 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 long as I serve, I'm good. We had a really good conversation in our van on the way home yesterday talking about a lot of these things. 
as long as I come here and just, and they ask me to do this and they ask me to do that, I must be going to heaven. And the reality of that is, y'all, is it's not true. The Bible is very clearly and simply says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ, here's what's real important. It says if you confess, in order to confess something, you have to open up your mouth and say something. You have to release some words into the atmosphere. And then you have to believe what you're saying. You can't say it just because we told you to say it. You got to put some, you got to believe what you are actually saying. So listen to me, family, because this is important to me. I don't want nobody to come up here on Sundays. I don't want nobody to come up here today, especially today and just say, okay, yeah, I won't lie. Yeah, let me get some friends to tell me the truth. No problem. Okay, I'll stop to think. The most important thing out of this whole entire thing is that you know Jesus Christ for yourself. Because we can be good. I go out in the lobby, high five. Yeah, man, I remember that show. That was cool and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself, I missed it. It is important that you know Jesus Christ for yourself. So real quick, everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want to I want to ask a question because there may be somebody in here today and you say hey I don't even know this Jesus that y'all are talking about I don't even know this Jesus that you're talking about who is this man that y'all keep talking about who, who is this person that this team was up here singing to and worshiping who, who is this man that we're talking about in this Bible and this very simply, honestly, could be some individuals who once upon a time, you knew who he was, but you know you haven't been living the life that's pleasing to him. So today, I want to give the opportunity for someone to come to know him or for somebody to come back home. Because that is the most important thing to me. If there's anyone in here today, and you say, Pastor Darnell, I need Jesus in my life. I need to accept him. I know I, I, I have him, but I haven't accepted him as my personal savior. And today, Pastor Darnell, I don't want to leave this room without accepting him as my personal savior. I need to make sure that my life is right. And there may be some of you in here and say, Pastor Darnell, I messed up, but I know what's right and I need to fix it today. I need to get my life in order. I need to make sure that I'm on the right path with every eye closed. If that's you, either one of them, just simply raise your hand right where you are. Just simply raise your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Raise your hand right where you are. Yep. So for those of you that are raising your hand, keep your hand raised. And as a body, we're going to say this together because we're going to pray and we're going to believe. We're going to pray and we're going to believe. So this is very simple. All you have to do is repeat after me. Y'all ready? Everybody's going to say it together. Say, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. But I also believe that you rose three days later with all power in your hands. Heavenly Father, I turn my life over to you. I surrender everything I am to who you are. Hey, devil, I will never serve you not one day of my life. Hey, devil. You have been evicted from my life. King Jesus, you now live inside of me. King Jesus, I will worship you every single day with everything I have. I give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I need somebody to celebrate. I need somebody to celebrate. 
I need somebody to celebrate. Woo! Listen. Let me put it in perspective like this as we get ready to go. You were laying in a hospital bed on life support. You were laying in a bed on life support. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just came in and breathed new life in you. And you were dying, but you ain't dead. You now have a new body. You have a new reason to live. So every single one of you that said that prayer, I want you to understand that you are now a child of the Most High God. Now I need you to celebrate. Now I need you to celebrate. Now I need you to celebrate. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Our angels in heaven right now that are rejoicing on your behalf. There are angels in heaven right now that are rejoicing on your behalf. They're saying, yeah, yeah. There's a song that says, hell lost another one. Now I'm free. Hell lost another one. And now I'm free. Woo! Woo! I get excited because we just added some people to the kingdom. Oh, man, yeah. So listen. For every single one of you that just said that prayer, I want you to do me a quick favor. Every single one of you that just said that prayer, you said, yep, I gave my life to Christ. I rededicated my life. They're going to put this on the screen. I want you guys to text LIFE to 74, I'm sorry, 77411. Every single one of you that just said that prayer, just text that real quick. Text LIFE to 77411. Every single one of you. And then also while they're doing that, there may be some of you that are in here right now and you may have led, have, are there any people in here you've led somebody to, cross, to Christ recently? Maybe, possibly. If you've led anybody to Christ, if there's somebody here from Crossover Church and it doesn't have to happen here in the church, we're talking about, I don't know, you were at a work, you were doing something, but you led someone to Christ. I need you all to do me a favor. I need you guys to email us. Email us. Let us know what happened. I want to hear that story. What did you do? Who did you lead to Christ? We want to hear from you. You can email revive at crossoverchurch.org. Revive at crossoverchurch.org. All right? Don't write the word at, but actually put the at when you do the email, okay? Revive at crossoverchurch.org, okay? Make sure you guys email us because we're going to be celebrating those individuals in a few weeks with some light bulb moments, all right? So right now, what I want you guys to do, did anybody get anything out of today's message? You got something? All right? What I want you guys to do um, for me, if there's anybody here at Crossover Church, you're here in the building, and you've completed growth track, and you have very recently started joining or you just joined a team serving, all right? If you're a new activator, you just finished growth track, and you since completing growth track have just joined a team, and you have not put your light bulb in the wall for joining a team, I want you guys to head to the dance floor right now. All my new activators, if you just completed growth track and you just joined a team, if you have not put a light bulb in the wall for joining a team, go out to the dance floor right now. All right, Lily's going to come, and she's got something for you guys. Give it up for Lily! Good morning, everyone. I just have a few quick announcements. Um, that was awesome. Um, so if you are a guest with us here today, if you are a VIP guest, I just want to encourage you. We are so grateful that you're here this morning. Meet us in the center of the lobby. We have a gift bag for you to take home with you. Um, we have our back to school event coming up on Saturday, August 6th. If you have participated before, you know it's an amazing time. It's a fun family event. We have free backpacks, resources, groceries. Invite people that you know. If you're interested in joining and serving with us, getting your hands and feet dirty, loving on people, praying for people, hugging people, you can sign up on the register page. That is Saturday, August 6th. Next week, we have child that... Okay. Next... <laughs> Next week, we have child dedications. 
So if you are interested in dedicating your child back to God, you've never had um, your baby dedicated or your child, you're welcome to do that. You can sign up on the register page as well. And I know this has been an awesome service, but how many, oh, one more announcement. Young adults, if you are between ages 18 to 29, not 30, not 17, 18 to 29, I will invite, and if you think you're a young adult in heart, but not in age, you're not welcomed. But um, they are gonna have a cookout today after the 1145 service. So let me encourage you, if you fit in that age group, come meet somebody, build community, make friends. Um, that is after the 1145 service. Okay, now, my favorite part. Forget all this. It's light bulb moment. So, if you would turn your eyes to the screen, I'm gonna pitch it to Pastor Christopher outside. Can you make some crazy noise for those that have started serving, started a relationship with Christ? Come on, okay. crossover, clap your hands and make some noise for our crossover family members that are serving, that are sharing their testimony, that are getting baptized. We got more people that are gonna put their light bulbs uh, here on the wall today and we are celebrating with them. We are clapping with them. We're excited about what God's getting ready to do in this new, new season for their life. Come on, put them light bulbs in, y'all. Let's make it happen. Woo, y'all make some noise in there. I love it. No, wait, wait, no, no. Y'all need to put them all in, in order now. Come on now. Y'all put them in order. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. We just got four more light bulbs added to the wall. We are well on our way. Y'all, we are heading into the fall. We're going to end the year strong. I'm excited. We need you to get excited. It's going to be incredible when we get this whole wall filled up. Come on, y'all. Let's make it happen. Going back to you now, Lily. Awesome. Would you stand with me? Let's stand as we get ready to dismiss with our mission statement. All right. Our mission is, you can say it with me, to empower people to discover, develop, and display Jesus Christ in every area of their lives. God bless you. Have an amazing week.